All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another installment of the Salesforce Simplified Webinar Series. We are going to get started. This is the Tools, Apps, and Packs Cool Free Tools for the Salesforce Admin. Um, before we do intros, hey, Josiah, thank you for joining me. Um, I'm going to go through and just say thank you to everybody that's watching this. Uh, live and or recorded. Appreciate you taking the time out of your day just to hang with us for a little bit. Maybe you'll take away something that would be great. The uh, agenda, we got to do quick intros, talk a little bit about Salesforce Labs, and then we're going to get into these following tools, um, you know, components and apps that I think are pretty cool, um, some of which I use every day. Without further ado, my name is Derek Cassis, VP of Modern Apps at Integra been here for just about a year. I left Salesforce last year to start this practice. And the whole goal is to connect with customers and help you all be successful. That's basically it. So know that we're here and uh, we're here to help you with all your Salesforce needs. Joining me today is Josiah. Josiah, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Derek. I'm excited to be here. I am the director of sales over on our nonprofit side of the house. Um, Computers for Community is our group of Zintegra that takes everything we do and offers it to the nonprofits at a highly reduced rate. Um, we also do a lot of other community work through that, that organization. Um, I am the Salesforce administrator for that side of the house and then just also a enthusiast for anything new tech. So excited to, excited to talk and see what you've got to, to walk us through today, Derek. Yeah, and I purposely didn't sync up with you before this one just to see if I could uh, <laughs> tell you something you don't, you don't use either. So um, inside me here, here we go. <laughs> yeah, because you know, I mean, there's so much stuff that we could talk about when it comes to cool tools and stuff like that. That's why I, I chose this as a topic. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I start all the webinars off with this. Yeah, obviously, we've got Dreamforce right around the corner. Uh, so getting excited about that. This was uh, taken at the top of the tower when I worked at Salesforce. Alcatraz. It's just an amazing building. And if you ever get a chance to get there, I would recommend it. So without further ado, I want to talk a little bit about Salesforce Labs first. So Josiah, right, do you know what Salesforce Labs is? I'm aware of it. I have not actively used okay. Salesforce Labs much. Yeah. So Salesforce Labs is essentially Salesforce um, provided tools on app exchange that are typically free, but it's more, it's a little more than that. And I wouldn't have known this had I not worked at Salesforce, but anybody that works at Salesforce that builds a prototype or a tool or a component or anything can submit it to security and get it vetted and actually put it up on app exchange under the Salesforce labs moniker. Right. And so there's, you know, it's still vetted, it's still secure, it's still well written, but it's just think about how many different minds there are at work in within within Salesforce that are generating, and these are like usually like they, they they fill a gap or a missing, you know, something that's missing. So there's a lot of really good stuff out there. That being said, there's there's things out there that may not be so good. So look at the ratings, some of them, you know, are old. Uh, but there's a lot of really good things out there at Salesforce Labs. Uh many of which most of what I'm going to show today comes from there, but not everything. So I just wanted to uh, point that out because there's um, a lot of work and a lot of really interesting things um, that they've been putting out. One thing so, I really, I do love about any of these, these styles of platforms, that's, that's the user experience right there. Like this is integrators, this is partners, this is everyone that's, you know, if they've done a project, they've seen the use cases, like that's, that's where that stuff comes from. You know, Salesforce has done a good job of building a platform, but then like all the tools need to be built on top of it. Yeah. A whole pile of, of experience that's available. Yeah. And that's truly what makes it, you know, so versatile in my opinion is the, app, the app exchange. Um, you know, it's the, the age old, you know, build it versus buy it and buy yep. it may be just that it's free. So it's just yep. built versus go get it in that circumstance. Um, and so, Pardon me. There's there's just um, a real and it's so easy too. You know, you just like click a couple buttons and it's added to your org. It's a really good setup. Uh, the first one that 
I'm going to talk about, and this was part of, I should give a shout out. It was part of a session last year at Dreamforce where they went through some tools and I took a note and was like, that'd be a pretty cool web to circle back on at some point. But this is a fairly robust project management package that you can get from App Exchange. Now, one thing I'll also note is typically App Exchange will link you to the GitHub, right? All, so it's open source. So these are also really good learning tools. So, you know, if you're wanting to be a dev or if you're wanting to figure out how you, how you can kind of make things look better or whatnot, you can go get some of these and then look at the code and, you know, understand how the component was built, understand how the lightning page was built. So there's, it's kind of twofold, but let me um, switch over to this in live. This is it, it, very full featured for something that's free, in my opinion, right? So we've got projects, we've got tasks, um, cases related to that. So let's just go into one. And you'll notice across the top here, you know, you've got your programs, you've got phases. I mean, it, it's just, it's so well thought out. And there's so much here that I was pretty impressed, to be honest with you, because there's a lot of paid, I mean, a lot of paid uh, yeah. packages out there for project management. Um, yeah. If you're a small shop or if you're just wanting to like, prove to somebody within your organization that you can do PM and project management through Salesforce, maybe grab this, install it. Um, you know, you can set up phases. So if I go into the project kickoff, right. And so you've got your associated, you know, your completion, you've got your associated tasks that go with the phase. Um, it's just, it's, it's really interesting. Let's let me see why this isn't refreshing. There we go. Um, it's really interesting to me how clean it is, right? I mean, looking at this, just like, what are your thoughts as I go through this? Have you seen this before? I've, I've heard of a free project management. I have not played with it. Hasn't seen anybody use it. I am curious, what is the object type of the projects? It's are all opportunity. No, this is all. They're all custom objects. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a totally custom package. Mm -hmm. um, at least my understanding. Now, I will say that, let me bring this over. Um, there is a huge admin guide. And so there's, yeah, PMT project phase, there's tasks. There's um, a bunch of, let's see, I wonder if we can see, we can't see the object. So there's a lot of relationships around this too. So the way you set it up is you, you grant the permission and then you can go put, available for scheduling on a user object, right? And that's how you basically would get to the scheduling. So, you know, don't need to go through all of what, you know, this thing, like the, you know, setting one up, but I was, as I went through this, like, let's just go here to that's this. Your whole, that's your whole resource management. Yeah, I mean, yeah. look, you can just, it's got resource management, it's got allocations, it's got, are you available? It's got assigned projects, um, you know, Let's see what they got for dashboards here for it. Um, oh, that's just probably the main dashboard one. So let's go back. Uh, let's go to programs. And let's go to upgrade. Yeah. And again, so it's like, you know, you've got your, your program may be overarching, overarching from like the projects and then you've got your tasks. So again, I just... I think this is really well. This is one of the one that's it's really well done. Um, it's it's fast. It's clean. It's fairly intuitive. Like if you go through and you want to set up, you know, projects and tasks and all that good stuff. Add files. Um, you've got your you know your field history and stuff like that. So um, so yeah. So I would recommend anybody that's interested in, you know, even if it's just a small team, right, a single threaded team that wants to do project management. Go out, take a look at PMT. Um, they also have, I believe, a console version of this. So we can open up the console. Now, if it, you know, console is the, the different nav, right? So everything opens up nested, um, which is nice because now I can open up this project, but then I can come back and open up my other project and I can work much more efficiently than the non-console navigation, in my opinion, right? Um, you can look at it through week, quarter, month, milestones. It's just, uh, it's pretty nice. So I like this one. The next one is org check. 
this is uh, pretty cool. This is for admins, right? And so it's got a ton of information from a monitoring perspective. Let's go look at this. So this is org check. And looking across the top here, you'll see that there's a lot of admin type stuff, right? So if I come in and I click on objects, right? It's gonna do its little song and dance where it's evaluating your org. I thought this was neat too. Like they've got some hover text to help you, you know, what you're, uh, what you're actually looking at with help, help, help text. Org-wide defaults. This is pretty cool because, you know, if you're always interested in quickly figuring what the org-wide default is for an object, you can quickly come here and kind of see what the settings are. Um, org documentation. So let's go to standard objects. And let's go to... Yeah, there are no objects because it's standard, right? So if I go to custom objects, let's see. Oh, please, uh, let's do this. Custom objects, time warp. Does it have any custom objects? This is supposed to show us the documentation on each object. <clears throat> Package or the type. I, I got you. Let's do this again. Standard objects, custom objects. So with that, I think that's running in the background. Let, let, let's get, I'm trying to find invoice. There we go. So like all this information about this object, right? In a different, it's in a, just a fairly easy to consume way of looking at it, right? What are the layouts? What are the, uh, the limits? What are the fields on it? Pretty cool way of looking at fields too, honestly. Um, the full API, you know, referenced in different, where is it referenced? Or different areas it's referenced in. Record types, relationships. Um, so that's objects. It's got users, right? So there, can, is, it, is this all still editable from in field on that object side or is that just a report? This is, this is reporting, right? Yeah. So it's it's basically just, you know, and showing, you know, so this is user reporting, never logged in, uh, permission set names, that's pretty useful information. Profile permission sets is interesting because, well, at one point Salesforce was saying that people needed to get off of profiles and move all their access control to permission sets, but then now they're saying that that's not going to be forced. Uh, but it's still it still is good to understand your profiles and your permission sets. So any, and I've got another tool for that coming up as well. Um, any tools that can help you understand and, you know, map your permission sets and your profiles would be good. Let me, I'm going to refresh this because it was sitting here from this morning. Let's see. Not that initialized. It's funny how, you know, you run through this stuff before you record and then it's, it slows down when you're recording, of course. Um, let that keep going. So yeah, I mean, it you can get the you get the idea behind this tool, right? I mean, it's essential. This is pretty interesting, right? The roles. So this is basically, and it's you know, I've got a ton of roles in this demonstration org, but you know, you can see the the structure and you know everything that the org has from a role perspective. You get your public groups. Automations is nice because what it does is it or what it should do, yeah. Um, you know, it's got your workflows, process builders, which hopefully you don't have a lot of, and then it's got your flows. Um, but it'll it'll kind of yell at you and tell you, hey, you need to have some descriptions. You know, is it you got any dependencies? What type is it? What API is it using? Uh, you know, that's another thing that's often forgotten. You know, as we as we keep getting upgrades, you know. Mm -hmm. You go back in and kind of up the the API to try to make it so it's not getting stale. Um, let's see, you got Apex, so it's going to check, you know, a Apex characteristics. Um, so again, this is like the way I look at this is that you know you've got your regular you got your regular admin stuff. You go into setup. Um, but this tool could help you actually just look at stuff at a glance, right? So you could just have it as your 
you know, one of your other tabs and just have some of this stuff open to keep an eye on it. Um, you know, obviously it's free, right? So I think that's one of the key facts here is that you know, yeah. if you get a tool like this for free, you might have some complaints about it, but you know, that's a yeah, lot I mean, of value just sitting there for you. From from a performance perspective, you know, it may not be like the fastest thing in the world. Sure. Um because of the way it's developed maybe it, and again with salesforce sometimes things are fast sometimes things slow down here and there and some of these i mean this org has like so much stuff in it because it's an, uh, a a demo org from salesforce um but yeah i mean so you know it was recompiling just to kind of get get some information but again you can see what it's it's doing quite a bit it's going out and it's grabbing everything for you and you got analytics. So, uh, you know, org check, I would recommend go out, get that. Um, this is also App Exchange, and we'll have this deck available. And I've linked the App Exchange page for all of these as well. Time Warp, one of my favorite. Um, now, you can notice right here, and this is a very straightforward and simple thing to explain. It's a Lightning Web component that you can put on an, like an account or an opportunity. And it will pull in all the activity, but in like a in like a scrollable timeline. Um, oh, wow. I, first, I first saw this at Health Cloud because Health Cloud introduced something <clears throat> very similar to this, and so I pull it down and put it in almost all my orgs because it's awesome. Um, like now, this demo org, everything was done at the same time, right? Obviously, so but you get the idea. So I'm on an account, and you can see that. You know, if, if I was trying to find when things happen or meetings, I can easily scroll here and find when it would happen. And then when I see what I want, I can hover and I still I, I even get like that summary. Right. Which is really helpful. And then from a opportunity perspective, you can also embed that. So you could see like, what are the care? What are the you know, what's happening within this? You know, and I like to go back and I rename it um, customer 360 because this this is. To me, every touch point would be on here. And it's just so much easier for me to understand the interactions than going through the different tabs. Quickly tab. get a visual of what happened here. Yep. I mean, you could easily start, you can see, you know, support <clears throat> cases and your product ships and everything all within one one pane of glass there real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Again, a free, free add-on. Yeah. And uh, it's it's configurable. You can configure how big it is. You can configure um, a variety of different pieces of it, but it is, you know, it just drops in and it's cool. You can put it on different objects, um, you know, the opportunity and the account are where I typically use it. Mostly on the um, the account is is where mm -hmm. I think it's very useful. Um, so that's one of my, that's one of my more favorite components that I typically grab. Um, again, App Exchange. GitHub, I, and this is a, this is another one where uh, if you're a developer or you like to tinker, go, go get this from GitHub and and look at how this was built. It's really cool. Yeah. Um, Derek, you know where I'm sure a lot of salespeople don't want to see that used, but could be really really powerful is drop that onto the the internal account of your sales team and be able to visualize what they're up to real quick, right? Because absolutely, yeah. I mean, because you can see like. You would visually yep. see gaps of inactivity very easily, yep. right? Yep. So yeah, absolutely. From a sales management standpoint, I'm seeing that as like that could be that could be huge to have a real quick dashboards of my five people in my team and what they've been up to this the last three days, yep. all on a visual chart. Absolutely. So this is another one that I use a lot um, since I found it. It's a it's actually a Chrome extension. And do you have you used this? Nope. Okay. So this one is, you see this little arrow right here? Mm -hmm. This is inspector. And so <laughs> what's interesting about that, you'll notice it, it actually pulled, it pulled up information about the record I'm on. But what I use it for is this data export piece. So instead of going into like developer console, I love mm -hmm. it because it tells me the like fields and you know, so if I wanted to act, like, let me see, if I wanted to pull um, like name, right? I can come in here and see, it gives me all the fields, right? So I, I don't even necessarily need to know what the name is or if I'm not for, if I'm not sure, right? You know how sometimes you make it the, yeah. you make it the underscore underscore C or what have you, right? I could do that, export, right? And now you know, it says, okay, you don't need the comma. 
So we get rid of the comma. But in addition to that, this is huge. So you can you can click this button and literally go to Excel and paste it in this format. Or you can click this button and paste it now to CSV. So this tool becomes really useful if you're using like data loader or things like that. Or if you're, if you're doing like really um, complex queries and stuff like that, you know, you can save them in here. It's a really useful tool, uh, you know, and then if you go back to, so let's go back to where we were. And one thing too, I, I know, um, you know, we partner with Island Secure Browser and pretty sure it's built upon the Chromium underneath. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that this would work in their secure environment. It's something that I haven't, I have to test. Um, so if anybody's using the Island browser and knows that, it'd be great to know. Um, but I, I plan to install this later today in there. But the, um, let's see, what I wanted to show you, let's let this, yeah, so show all data. So it, it just shows me all the fields like really quickly, right? Um, and now, you know, shows relationships. Um, I mean, it's just really fast and easy. I, I use this thing all the time. This thing, if anything, go get this extension because you'll thank me later. Um, yeah, that's uh, top on my list. Yeah. So, I mean, so I don't have to build a report of everything. I, I mean, you're building your report right there. Yeah. You're already, you get to preview the data before you have to run the full export, open file, find it. Like yep. you can see what's happening. Oh, Get it all massaged before you start. It's awesome. Copy yeah. paste. I love it. It's very good. It's got org limits and import. I haven't, I, I haven't used it for import. Um, mm -hmm. I typically would rather use like the, the real thing for import just cause mm -hmm. I'm cautious, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's awesome. So for real. This one is something I, I stumbled across and I, I think it's pretty awesome. It's actually a Heroku app. And for those not as familiar with Heroku, that's the, you know, the platform as a service, um, you know, where you can get, you know, you, you could get, um, you know, like build an application that interacts, you know, it's, it's a whole separate thing, right? It's a platform as a service. You can do like Postgres databases, all kinds of stuff. Um, but without going down that rabbit hole, I found this because I was um, looking at, you know, I mentioned this before, but the whole concept of moving away from uh, profiles to permission sets that was going to be required by 2026. Salesforce has subsequently re removed that requirement, but who knows if it'll ever come back. So there needs to be an understanding of profiles and what's in a profile and comparing stuff. And I found this and it's really interesting. So you basically go to this, you go to this page and you, all you do is you click on login production or sandbox and it just brings us this view up. Um, and now what you can do is let's do this. Let's um, clear assignments. So this is what it looks like when you start, you can literally like drag this stuff, but, but check this out. So it's got permission sets. It's got profile. So I'm going to pull a profile. Let's do marketing user. You drag it up, right? And I want to compare that to. Uh, let's do SDO partners. You can pull that up, right? And what it'll do is it'll it, it it will show you if there are differing perms and stuff. It'll show you what's in here, right? So let me. Um, let me grab this sys admin. Where is that? System admin. Why am I not seeing it? Here it is. Okay. And I may need to. Re you know what? I may need. I need to redo this. Hold on. Sorry about that. Yep. So this is how easy it is, right? So you do profile. Let me go system admin. Oops. Okay, and then I'll compare that one to. There we go. Now we got data. Yeah. Let's compare it to this one. Oops. Partners. 
Okay, so unique perms, right? So this is unique to here, right? Mm -hmm. So the different perms, um, so object permissions, setup permissions, like, you know, it's being able to like extract the differences between two things is what I'm trying mm -hmm. to show. Right? So, you know, two profiles, there's two users, or you can even do more than two, right? It's just, I found, I found this really, um, really interesting. And let's do a user because this one was cool too. So I direct one user there. We'll do one user there. And we'll do me here. Let that do its thing. And again, this is like, you know, th these tools are really just like when you're troubleshooting or when you want to know a little bit more intel about your, you know, your org. Um, that's really where these things come into play. So let me... Yeah, cool. So common, right? <clears throat> Each of these users have both. Uh, these are common amongst these users. Um, unique perms. So doesn't look like they have much unique. Is there any different? Yep. So this person has all this stuff that this person does not have. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I just, it's not like earth shattering, but I didn't even know this thing existed. You don't have to install anything. You literally just use it and it, you know, pulls this stuff in. You can actually look at permission sets. This is where it gets really interesting. You know, if you're like, you think you may have overlapping of permission sets and you're trying to consolidate, you can actually do, you know, use this to find the, the common stuff. Because, you know, at the end of the day, if you have permission sets, four of them with all the same stuff in there, and maybe you could consolidate all that stuff into one, right? And then you're not having yeah. to set the same stuff. <clears throat> So, so again, that, this is a this is a, a Heroku app. This is not App Exchange. This isn't installed no. into your own environment. You no. just log into your Salesforce from this Heroku app. Yep. Wow. You know, it's, not, it's not you know it's just literally you know you're authenticating yourself, so you're yep. seeing what you have you know. So obviously, what I'm seeing is what I have access to see. So obviously, I wouldn't see stuff if I didn't have access to these objects. So this is for an admin. Yep. That's pretty cool. Dashboard pack. Um, so for those that are either new or want help with like dashboard creation and stuff, this is a really, I put this on there just because it's, again, see employee built. That's the concept behind Salesforce Labs, right? And so yeah. they have a whole, like when you install the dashboard pack, um, you... Let's see, where is it? Let's go here. Um, you can find it, Derek. I believe in you. Dashboards. It puts like all kinds of dashboards into your system. And okay, see all the like one, two, three, four. That that's coming from the dashboard pack. And so, you know, you can take these and adapt, you know, adapt them to what you want to, you know, what you're trying to do. So one of the ones I thought was interesting was like, what's inside Salesforce, right? So it's just, you know, number of type of accounts, active users, you know, context by industry. This, and it was just reports that on a dashboard, right? So you've got stuff that you can like reverse engineer. How do they do this report? How do they do this dashboard? That type of stuff. Um, one that's cool is support KPIs. Um, and obviously, you know, the for you know, the first time it runs, it has to refresh, but a lot of really good dashboards. And like it says, you know, sales, marketing, and service. Um, and mo like, <coughs> pardon me, these dashboards are all going to be, you know, have mobile, mobile ready because they're dashboards. But some of the, like, like should have mentioned that, but some of the things that, you know, that are advanced, like time warp, some of these things don't work on mobile. You just have to check and double check. Um, some of them are mobile, some of them are not. So um, dashboards and reports is one of those things that I mean, find stuff that's close to what you're trying to build. You can get 80, 90 percent of the work already finished out. There's I've seen so many administrators go through and rebuild stuff from the ground up. And it's like it, this is the same every single time. We're all really trying to do very similar use cases. Absolutely. I mean, this Grab is a good dashboard pack for sure. Executive overview, right? Just grab this and start start from here. Start from here. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's 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 just good. It's, it's, it's a good starting. Yep.
it's a good starting point. So, okay, that's the dashboard pack. And one more that I didn't put a slide in because I wasn't sure I was going to show it, but I'm going to show it. It's, um, and, and it's got, and the reason I have this up, it's got only two and a half stars. Typically, I would like just skip over this, but it's got some interesting capabilities, very similar to the, um, it's similar to the Heroku, but it doesn't, it, it, it looks at things differently, right? And so, you know, if I can do, let's do this, if it works, yeah. It's going to show you like, obviously you know what access and permissions i have so you can tell that i'm in my here's my my profile i've got all these permission sets um i'm in these permission set groups and it's going to take a while because i'm an admin and i got access to a ton of stuff in here but i like this right it's it's cool how it shows me all the objects it shows me all the custom objects it's just easy this is a little easier for me a little easier on the eyes for me. So I don't know why it's got such bad reviews. Maybe people are trying to use it for different things. Um, it's got a converter and I've not, I've, I mean, full transparency, I've not had, to, I've not tested this, but again, the idea behind this is to, to take a profile and turn it into a permission set because that was a driver. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would do this in a demo org before we do it in a in a production org, but that was that's the idea, right? And so I think that the reason it's gotten bad vibes is this may not be perfect. Um, I like the, the analyzer. That's that's kind of why I I download it is I think that this is useful. So um, so that I mean that's really what I wanted to talk about. It, it's just you know instead of having you know a hundred of them, and again thank you for your time today, but it's. It's going back to, you know, Salesforce Labs and this, you know, this is like, for example, um, you know, the Chrome, Time Warp, the Chrome extension, Org Check. I use those quite a bit all the time. There's a ton other that obviously almost, you know, every admin could probably give a list of two or three that they like. Um, so again, that's, you know, what we're trying to do is say, get out there, go take a look and, you know, put them in your sandbox, put them in a dev, dev org play with the stuff, figure out what you like. But again, also it's a really good way of learning. So a lot of times, you know, you can do a trail and trailhead is awesome. Don't get me wrong. Um, but sometimes like navigating without a map is better. And so go and look at how these were built to, and then just try to like reverse engineer them and understand them and maybe try to change it a little bit for yourself. You try, you'll learn if you're in the it dead. It forces you to actually turn on your brain. Yeah. Really yeah you're does. not just following a you step. Get in. Yeah. Step, right? yeah. Um, you know, I remember like when I was learning, when I was first learning Salesforce, I got tired of, the, of just the step by step. And I was like, well, let me just build a uh, an NFL team. Right. Like and I yeah. just created custom objects and player objects and rookie and all that stuff. And then it all started clicking like that. Oh, that's what a record type is. And oh, that's what, you know, so. Just think outside the box. So to get, you know, you, you'll get it. But any uh, anything you want to add, Josiah? Do you, what are your What are your thoughts on the the ones that I shared? Um, the Salesforce Inspector, the Chrome. Yeah. Um, add on. I'm gonna install that right now. That's gonna help <laughs> me on a daily basis yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, the Time Warp that was really cool. I don't. Yeah. I mean, that's not that's not groundbreaking in any way, but that helps you anything that helps you visualize stuff to me yeah. data is great i love data but you have to visualize it if you can't see it in a clear consumable function then it's just it's just a you know data in a in an excel spreadsheet it's not it's not helping you actually get to what you need to do yep um so that the time warp being able to visualize what's happening in an account on a timeline i think that's going to help I think that would help me from a sales standpoint, understand what my team's up to. And then additionally understand, you know, how have we been in, interacting with an account and understand, you know, how often are we touching them? How are they emotionally feeling about things? What's going on? Um, and just so quick to be able to look at that. Yeah. So those yeah. two pop out to me. Yeah. Um, I think my other big key takeaway, there's just so much out there. Yeah. Um, I mean, on the, the app exchange itself, but then, 
you pulled a whole nother whole nother app platform that's going to have a whole nother pile of things and there's there's so much out there that I would just I would really encourage everyone you know find good partners that know what's out there get into good community groups um, so that you're bumping into other people that are, are using tools um, yep. build your community get involved if you try to build everything in Salesforce by yourself it's going to be it's going to be a lot <laughs> it's a huge platform and there's so much work that's already been done well yeah and it's not efficient right I mean no there are there are times to do things yourself there are times in my opinion yep. to lean on the community is the way i'll yeah. put it um and again like there's things that are paid in here and there are things that are really expensive but i you know i'll i'll come in and look and look at, and i just typed in salesforce labs just to show i mean there's a whole bunch of stuff that they do um but yeah it's it's this right here this is what really like got me excited about the salesforce platform the first time i saw it was the ability to change it morph it make it look make it what you want um mm -hmm. and you know, it's pretty, it's pretty, pretty impressive. So, and again, like to your point, team up with, you know, that's what we do. I mean, I'm, I'm here. If anybody wants to reach out and have questions about that or, you know, help understanding the best way of testing these things out, you know, that's what we're here for. We're just here to help you guys be successful. So again, appreciate the time. Josiah, appreciate you joining me again, as always. And uh, I think that's a wrap. Thanks so much, Derek. All right. See you next time. Well, do.